In this video, we will cover best techniques for answering does the conclusion follow questions. These questions can give you a lot of overlapping information up front and our brains can struggle to manage all of the different keywords and categories. To cope with this, we will only make some brief observations while scanning the text and instead focus on tracking the keywords, such as names and categories from each conclusion. Our objectives over the next eight minutes or so are to show you examples of keywords and categories and demonstrate how they can be tracked through a text, allowing us to answer confidently. As you may recall from introduction to the decision-making subsection of UCAT, you have just over a minute for decision-making questions. However, Venn diagrams and basic probability questions should take you a lot less time, so you will have between one and one and a half minutes for the more complex questions, including conclusion drawing ones. We will set the timer at 90 seconds for now, but try to beat this time wherever possible. Choose whether the following options are yes, the conclusion does follow, or no, the conclusion does not follow. As you can see, in these types of questions, a big issue is keeping track of all the different names and categories. These are our keywords. We have five names mentioned and four items, handbag, rucksack, purse and wallet. These types of questions can be quite overwhelming to many students. This question type allows the examiner to see whether, as a future doctor, you have the ability to analyse unfamiliar information critically under time pressure. What is important is to keep your cool. I would advise from experience to quickly read the main text more than once first before racing to the answer of the questions so it becomes familiar and easier to go back to when answering questions. I would also advise not reading all the questions at once but only reading one after finishing the previous one so you do not have too much information to take in at any one time. So how do we read such questions? Let us go through the questions making some brief initial observations as we go. So for conclusion one, Bernie carried a wallet. Scan for Bernie. We find him in the last sentence. Some of the male attendees carried a rucksack, including Bernie. So Bernie has a rucksack. We now scan for a link between wallets and rucksacks. We find that it says, no individual who carried a wallet also carried a rucksack. Bingo! Bernie cannot be carrying a wallet as rucksacks and wallets are mutually exclusive. Therefore, we deduce that the answer is no. The conclusion does not follow. Now for the conclusion two. If Jacob, who is male, and Georgia, who is female, both attend to the event, then only one of them carried a handbag. Scan for Jacob and Georgia. We cannot find them, so scan for a link between their categories, which are male and female, and the final keyword, handbags. It is best to attempt questions which are two parts, step by step, rather than rushing in and trying to work out both at the same time. Let us start with working out whether Georgia has a handbag. The top line of the text states, all the female attendees carried handbags, except for Anna. Half of the attendees with handbags also had rucksacks. From this statement, it can be concluded, Georgia, as she is female, will carry a handbag. Now let's work out whether Jacob, who is male, is carrying a handbag. 
Only the female category is mentioned, not the male category. The only line in the text referring to males is Some of the male attendees carried a rucksack, including Bernie, but there is no mention of handbag. Therefore, we cannot conclude anything about Jacob and whether he has a handbag. We know Georgia has a handbag, but not whether they both have one. Therefore, no, we cannot say that the conclusion follows since we only know for definite that Georgia has a handbag. Let's move on to conclusion 3. Beatrice, who is female, did not carry a rucksack or a wallet. Therefore, she carried a handbag and a purse. Scan for Beatrice. Not there. But we know she has a handbag as she is female and not Anna. Scan for not having a rucksack or not having a wallet. Any attendee who did not carry a rucksack carried a purse or a wallet. So Beatrice had a wallet or a purse. But conclusion 3 also stated that she did not have a wallet. She must have had a purse and so the answer is yes as the conclusion follows. With conclusion 4, there were more men who carried rucksacks than women who carried rucksacks. Scan from information about the male category. We only get some of the male attendees carried a rucksack, including Bernie. We have no absolute quantities or mathematical relationships here. The term sum is quite a soft qualifier. It doesn't tell us much to be able to draw a conclusion. Therefore, in this case, we have to say no, the conclusion does not follow. Lastly, let's look at conclusion 5. Some men carried a purse or a wallet. Again, scan for information about the male category. We only get some of the male attendees carried a rucksack, including Bernie. If only some of the male attendees carried a rucksack, it can be inferred that some did not carry a rucksack. Now you ask yourself, does the keyword rucksack link to purse or wallet? Scan the text again to find the sentence. Any attendee who did not carry a rucksack carried a purse or a wallet. It can be concluded that men who did not have a rucksack will have a purse or wallet. So yes, the conclusion does follow. Of course, all or almost all of those links must occur in your head as you will not have time to write them down or say them out as we have done. As you can see, you do not have time to deduce everything you need from a question stem. Instead, you must leap to the conclusion, extract the keywords, scan for them in the passage and deduce the necessary links. Keyword tracking is especially useful for a chain of deductions. Bernie and wallet do not appear in the same sentence, but by tracking the keyword Bernie to the category rucksack carrier, we could then scan for a link between rucksacks and wallets, which we successfully found, and it allowed us to answer one of the questions. We hope this video has made you feel more confident about answering conclusion drawing questions and given you the tools to answer them more quickly than you might have. With keyword tracking, we have a realistic shot of assigning all five conclusions in under a minute. Keep practicing and you'll continue to get quicker. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.